Hey, if you're just coming in, basically, yeah, so, this runs a little bit better. I need to force a short trade with her like that, just auto attack spin. Alright, so now I'm about to hit level 2. I queued right there just because I know I'm rebuilding Fury anyway, so I want to get as much health back as possible. So, shoved the first two waves in. I only got 10 out of the first 12 CS. I was like, whatever. Still have more CS than her, I guess. So, 10 to 7, and the wave is shoving back towards me. I got the ward right here so I can see if Meshi goes down to the river to gank top. I'm gonna let this wave show back towards me. Right now, Ribbon is stronger. I'm looking to dodge out on any trade she's trying to do with me. I'm gonna Q heal up. I'm gonna walk up for CS and that's it. I'm gonna constantly pay attention to this ward to see if I see Master Yi coming up. I don't want to trade with Riven here. Because one, Riven at level 3 is significantly stronger than Trimmer at level 3. And the fact that he has a bigger wave than I do. Which is a really important factor to consider. So right there, I bait her into shoving the wave a little bit quicker than she wanted to. That way I can get more minions. And but I baited her into using her AoE to trade with me there since I walked up. So I've got the CS on the turret. It's 22 to 16. So I'm ahead in CS. We see the uh, Mash E walk down to river. Saw Graves already took the uh, Skull Crab. It's back here. Alright, we're just chilling. We're going to slow push this way back into Riven. Then we're going to back for team up. So if you get really good CS early game, you can buy your team at, which costs 975 gold if you start with a longsword, on your first back. And if you set up waves like this, like, I'm slow pushing a huge wave in her turret. If she tries to trade with me right now, she's going to be trading into such a huge minion wave that I can fight her in it and beat her, right? Even though she's got two longswords now. And when I come back to lane, I'm going to have a freaking team up. So even though she's going to have minion advantage when I come back to lane after resetting, uh, I'll use team map to thin out her wave and then I can still fight and beat her. So, this team map spike is the best in the game. And it's it's the way I beat the majority of my opponents when I do go team map. So I got 40 CS at uh, 4 minutes 50. I only missed a couple. I'm gonna walk back to lane first, then buy my uh, team up, buy a pink, so I get a little bit extra vision. You can buy a pink if you have a little bit extra gold, otherwise it's not super important. So, the wave is, sh she's slow pushing this wave, so I'm taking a look at her, she's slow pushing the wave. So, once you get your team up, here's the way you do. You take these Krugs on the way to lane, and it gets you an extra 4 CS and a lot of extra gold, which... I mean, if you walked up here, you be, could be in a bad spot. You could get ganked, you're overextended, or whatever. You could wait until it's a little bit closer. Alright. I'm going to use my potion. I'm going to look to fight Riven here. I have Tima advantage, which is really good. She doesn't know that I'm about to hit 6. Okay, so you, she used both sums, I used both sums. Oh, shit. Wait, he's gonna flash on me, right? Oh, he has ghost. Is he trying to bait me? <laughs> oh, thank goodness he has ghost and not flash. Yeah, I spun into that wave to clear the minion wave, and uh, Master Yu is right there. 
I'm gonna shove this next wave because I really want Zerker Grease. And I have team out so I can insta shove the wave, right? So now I have 1100 gold, perfect gold for a Zerker Greaves. I was able to shove the wave all the way in before Riven got back to lane. This Yi is Tyler's girlfriend? Is it? I thought she was a, like a talent player or something. That's Poro. That's Poro. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Riven has ult and I don't. I can still take trades with her, but I have to be careful. So I'm just getting a little bit of extra damage there. I'm gonna hard shove the wave. Really good thing about Team is since you clear the wave so quick, you can build up your fury really quickly too. I almost have my ult back. If Riven commits on me here, I just kill her. Yeah, so since she committed her cooldowns onto me, I'm just gonna put a pink there. I don't wanna have to bother taking out that uh, pink ward right now. And, but I still wanna see if Yi is coming up behind me. All right, Yi is down here. Riven's still dead. I can take one more plate and I'll back. If it was another champion besides Riven, something with no mobility like a Nastus or something, I would take two plates. But since Riven can get back to lane really quickly, I'm only going to take one. I'm going to heal up. I'm going to wait for a BF Sword for my SMG respite. I'm going to walk out of base now. I'm going to buy the BF Sword right before I get out of Fountain. And since the wave is shoving back towards me, I can take Krogs on the way to lane. However, we do want to watch Riven to see if she hard shoves the wave. If she hard shoves the wave, which it looks like she's doing, we got to go straight back to lane. We can't take Krux. Just because Krux take a while to do. And we don't want to miss this experience. I have no ult right here, right? But I'll tell you how what we can do. You know those juicy Krugs I was just talking about? We shove in the wave and we just go do the Krugs. We don't want to be overextended with no ultimate, no flash. So we're just going to do these things real quick. If Graves wanted to do them, I would back off and just undo it. But since it doesn't look like you want to do it, I'll just take it myself. I used my Q right before I killed those medium Krugs, just so I can build up my Fury back to full. And then I basically full HP, right? And so you can get large advantages by taking um, Krugs and like other jungle camps in between. Like I could start taking a Scuttle. Like once I take this turret, I can have access to Yi's jungle and start denying him uh, jungle camps. So I took a pretty good small trade. Auto attack team at spin. Just chunk her out. Looks like Graves wants the first blood turret. And... Back. Oh, I was hoping to get first blood turret solo, but if he wants to share it, that's cool. I'm gonna try to get a second charge out of this Herald. It did half her health with that trade. That was bad for Riven. Got her flash. I'm able to get a second turret here. No one's rotating towards me. I could get a little bit of damage on this next turret. So, the only people alive are these three, right? They're all showing on the map. Ezreal threw an ult towards top lane, although it's gonna be a little bit late. He even get that minion. Feels bad. Alright. So, Yi's jungle is up. So, I can't get this full turret, so it's better always get golden experience, right? So, I'm gonna get all the golden experience from Yi's jungle here, and then I'm gonna reset. So, 
So what I hope to show you in this game is like how to get extremely good farm and to extend your lead in snowball, not just by killing your opponent, but also getting an insane amount of farm. And with Tima on Trinmere, you can you can do that very easily. <coughs> Alright, so we got double dagger, we found another pink. Um, our pink was here, but I think the ribbon cleared it earlier. Why don't I max ult? It's not important for Trinmere to max ult. It, like, it doesn't make the ult more effective. It just lowers the cooldown slightly. And Trinmere's ult cooldown at rank 1 ultimate with 40% CDR is around 60 seconds. So... You know, you kill your opponent with your ult, you back, you come back to lane, girl with backup, basically. So, no need to put more points in it. Could just get more damage or more slow percentage and attack damage reduction with your W. If you run the lethal tempo, don't rush uh, Ravenous. If you if you take Conquer instead of lethal, you can rush Ravenous. That's really good. Just because it'll allow you to stay in the fight longer. Alright, so we see Yi here, and Revan's there too. We could just take this turret. Now, we gotta make a decision here of whether we wanna take Inhib. Because it's really early in the game, right? He is Guardian, that's an F Aftershock. So we could dive him with ulting. Now again, golden experience. Experience being the number one thing. We want to make sure to take these jungle camps as soon as they spawn. Keep denying the Master Yi his golden experience. I'm going to put a pink word there. Really good one to put because uh, that bush is not often checked and can get a lot of good vision. This Gromp's about to spawn. I'm going to take this real quick. If you guys are wondering how I'm healing up, I have Bloodline on my runes. Which bloodline is the best scaling rune? And since I'm farming so much with this setup, uh, I'm stacking up really quickly. I got 6.6% .6 at four, uh, 14 minutes. So here, I'm gonna buy my best spike in the game. So right here, when you have these items, walk back to lane first and then buy your items. When you have this setup, Tiamat, Zerkers, Essence Weaver, Cloak of Agility, and Stinger, this is one of the strongest spikes in the game. Once you have these items, you're basically god. You destroy everybody. I'm so far ahead, the red buff is infinitely better than me. I'm level 12, the graves is all 8. Master Yi just recalled. Let's see if his blue's up. Okay, it's not. I can 1v2 the Yi and the Ribbon. Ribbon's level 10. I'm just gonna attack her. Trigger lethal tempo so I can shovel it faster. And we can rotate and take mid farm too. Maybe put a little bit of pressure on Zillion. I'm just gonna take Krog or the wolves. Alright, let me take that Rift Herald. Allow me to get uh, pressure on there and him. I want to shove this way first before I go to Rift Herald, just so I don't miss out on minions of Golden Experience. Golden Experience being the uh, main thing to look for. So everything's gone, but their top jungle camps are gone. Uh, top is shoved in. I'm just going to go take Rift Herald now. The biggest thing that's enabling me to shove and farm so fast is the team hunt. 
And you see how I'm like three to four levels above their whole team? I mean, I have four kills, but I mean, the biggest difference between me and them is I'm getting myself so much experience. I spent a zillion first and I flashed my damage onto the Riven just so that Riven couldn't react with her flash or zillion couldn't react with an ult on her. Shut down. So it's like a, it's like sleight of hand, you know, with, um, with like a magician. Like same thing, make them look one way so they don't, they can cut off guard. Once I take these camps, I'm gonna look to um, shove top and reset. Then I'm gonna look to take over bots out of the map. The boss, like taking away the Krugs and the Raptors is gonna be a lot more important to take away from Master Yi since both those camps are worth more gold and more experience. At least I'm pretty sure. At least it used to be. I don't even know what this new season's jungle is. Gonna buy an Executioner. It's a really good um, buy against the healing from Riven. Plus, they have a Teraku heals. And Zillion's ult also heals on the revive. Pressuring bots out of the map, like 19 minutes plus for like right before when Baron's bot spawn is really good. SG is a funny guy if he thinks he can 1v1 me. That's all I'm gonna say. Even have to ult. Level sixteen at nineteen minutes. I'm so ridiculously ahead of the curve. There's, you know, this champion becomes very simple once you get to this point. But getting to this point is like what takes skill. Mm, I'm just gonna take top camps to heal up. look to push in top lane. My inventory is full, so I don't actually have to take myself off the map right now. Like, I can still shove out waves and just farm until I get Trinity Force. Three hundred CS in twenty minutes. That's a frog and special. Have an, I'm gonna take one more wave so I have enough for my Trinity Force. I'm gonna go bottom and match the Master Yi. Yeah, Bloodline's the best skilling, um, like Legend Rune in the Precision Tree. Master, you got a double kill. 
I don't want to over... I'm sitting on f almost 4,000 gold. I need it back. And th uh, they're getting the response back to and Master Reset. Okay. Let's grab Trinity. I'm going to have a red pot right here, too. I'm going to try to maximize my spike as best as possible. I could solo Baron. Absolutely. I'm so far ahead of the curve, I could solo Baron. But soloing Baron, guess what you're not getting a lot of? You're not getting a lot of gold. You're not getting a lot of experience in the time that you're soloing Baron. And it can be risky, especially when this game is completely in my hands to, to lose. Like, if I lose this game, it's because I screwed up somewhere, right? I don't have to force a thing like Solo Baron, because that's a an inherently risky play. When realistically, I don't even think they can 1v5 me, man. I'm doing so much damage, I can just hop to from target to target because my mobility with CDR. Only thing I have to worry about is their CC chain with Zillion and Tarek. Because if I get locked down, they got a good amount of damage too with the um, Master Yi. Not committing to seeing him just because I haven't seen any of them on the map. We could just go take this. Oh, she wasn't there. I was thinking they were in the... Wait, I did 1100 damage crit. Master Yi's on red buff. I'm not even gonna try and contest this. Just in case Ezreal ult could steal it, I waited until Grave Smite was up and I didn't auto attack the Baron towards the end so he can cleanly smite it with no issue. A lot of Baron steals come from the fact that your team bursts it, which. And your jungler doesn't have the reaction time to combine his smite with your team's burst. Grab Moldor Miner, go bottom. My last item, I could sell, I could upgrade to Ravenous Hydra if I feel like I'm team fighting because the AoE damage is really nice. I just one-shot Ezreal. <laughs> or I can grab Blade of the Rune King if I feel like I'm like in a 1v1, 1v2 situation for the majority of the time. Because Blade of the Rune King is better for like single target damage, right? The AoE is really nice. I got my ult back already. It's 43 second cooldown. It's so low. I almost one shot him, man. I think he would have died a red buff that Terracle didn't come in. Whew. I'm doing some damage. Man, I got taken out. We overcommitted. Shoot, we should just rotate and take them in turret. But I give 1k gold to. Okay, I gave it to the CDR boots as well, so it's not too bad. He doesn't even have tabbies. If I gave it to Yi, I'd be worried. I, w I would be legitimately concerned. Because Yi, I mean, that champ. Probably the one champ that's like significantly easier in trend. <laughs> you know, for me, I'm just spinning right clicking and uh, you know pressing R occasionally. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's right click god. <laughs> I 
it's bonus bounty 700 gold. So they, so like usually a champion's worth 300 gold, right? And so get, since they got 700 bonus, I, that's what equals to a thousand. So they also got a thousand gold there, but. Oh, whoops, I have my target champions only on. What's up, Derek? Mm. Yes, life's still off, man. I can just go grab Blood Soul. Oh, they surrendered. But anyways, hope you guys learned something about how to farm and how to get 300 CS in 20 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.